Hello and welcome to Wisdom Bites. Hope you're well. Thank you once again for joining us. Very much appreciated. Another amazing day to do another amazing video. I hope you'll find a lot of value in this video. I'm going to cover quite a lot of things as much as I possibly can within the time limits that I've got. And in today's video, I'm going to be really covering a larger picture view as I normally do. And this time I'm going to look at something that I haven't looked at for quite a while. And that's the log growth curves, just to give us the bigger picture in terms of what we can expect in the next few years of where this log growth curve is showing us that the price of Bitcoin is going to. I'll also do the micro analysis of the current price action. A lot of people are panicking because the price isn't going very far very quickly. And I'll give you a rundown as to what I think where we are and why it's actually more positive than you think it is. But before we begin, the usual polite reminder, please remember this is just my perspective. I can be completely wrong. So please do your wider research before you make any investment decisions. I was hoping to have a little bit of time to do the third part of my series on the attitude and why our attitude will determine the amount of success that we have in our life. So I'll try and cover that in the next video if I can, because there is so much to go through in this video as well. And I'm gonna begin with the log growth curve here on the monthly chart. And as we know with the history of Bitcoin, we've come to the top of this log growth curve line here. As you can see, the first time was back here in June 2011. But this was part of the first cycle which actually culminated in the blow off top here back in November 2013. This was followed by a bear market of about 12 months. And this bear market at the beginning, because it's not regarded as the first cycle, but part of the first cycle, this downturn really lasted about four or five months. However, the second cycle topped out in December 2017. And once again, that was followed by a 12 month bear market. And currently, while we haven't got to the top that we were expecting over here, which would have taken the price to anywhere around 180,000 plus, and we were all expecting 200, $300,000, we're currently in this downtrend at the moment. And our narrative is that maybe we're going into a 12 month bear market, just like this one here and this one here. So only time will tell if that's going to play out, but we've got no other evidence to suggest otherwise. So we'll stick to that narrative until the price action tells us otherwise. And we should always be ready to move and maneuver and change our opinion. And one of the greatest things I've learned in my life as part of my personal development is always give yourself the right to change your mind. Always give yourself the right to change your opinion. Always give yourself the right to walk away from situations and circumstances which are not going to be beneficial to you. So once you give yourself the right to do those things, it empowers you to make better decisions because then you're not encapsulated or trapped by previous thoughts or previous opinions or previous beliefs that you might have. So if indeed that we are in a 12 month bear market, then there are two points where it could find a support level. In the past, which we can have a look at. We've come to the bottom of this log growth curve line here. On this occasion, as part of the first cycle, but in the second cycle, we didn't come to the last line of support here. But in this cycle, we did actually, during the COVID situation, come down here. So unless we have another COVID situation, I wouldn't be expecting it to come to the bottom of this line, more likely to the top of this line here. So if this is the end of the year, and this is where the price is going to come back and find support, then, I would suggest that this would be around about the 30,000. So we could really bottom out at the $30,000 mark. And that would be in keeping with where, as I said in the last video, where the 200 weekly moving average is going. As you can see with this green line, it seems to be aiming for that point there. So the narrative of the 12 month bear market seems to be coming into line with the 200 weekly moving average, which is where we found support previously after the first cycle and the second cycle. And only in the COVID situation did we fall well below that one. And that was obviously a one-off event. So again, the log growth curves would suggest and would back up our narrative that we're in a 12 month bear market and we're gonna come back somewhere along the line here to find support at this point. If this narrative doesn't work out, then it may well be that we actually have a blow off top at the end of this year here. That's always possible, or we must always keep our mind open to that. And that would be around about the $240,000 mark. And if it's at the end of the next year, that will take it to 379. And the following year, at the end of 2024, that will take it to 585. And the end of the following year, which would be the end of the current four year cycle that we're thinking, i.e. if this is a 12 month bear market, 
then that would be followed by three years, one, two, three, to the end of 25, and that would take the price to around about the 885,000. It isn't out of the realms of possibility with Bitcoin. And I just wanted to show you this chart because I think this narrative is far more realistic than we could care to imagine. If we have a quick close look at this level here, we can see quite clearly that we lost this log growth curve line here with this candle. And we're trying to get above this line here for the last two months. And the current month is again struggling to get above it. And that level is at 48,000, which is in confluence with, as we know, the 200 daily moving average, as we can see here. So everything is coming into confluence with what's on the charts and where the price may be heading. So we'll do a bit of micro analysis to have a look at exactly what's happening with the price here. And if we check the weekly chart, we can see quite clearly the 8 EMA, the 8 exponential moving average, which blasted through four weeks ago here, is still currently, despite the weakness in the price, we're still well above the 8 EMA. So that's still quite bullish. And this will suggest that we're still on our way to higher levels. And if we have a look at the 50 simple moving average, this is showing some level of weakness here. As you can see, it was only two weeks ago we went above the 50 moving average for the first time since we fell out of it here in December 2021. So that was a bullish sign. We kept above it last week, but currently we're just struggling to keep above it here. So we'll keep our eye on this. The reason why I've got the green line here, the 200 weekly simple moving average, is that this is more than likely going to be where we're going to be heading somewhere in the future. So keep our eye on this. And this indecision candle that we got last week is what's causing the current bearish sentiment here. But as you can see, we haven't gone below the wick of that. So this is still looking, find some support from which to bounce to the upside. And if we run down the time frames to the daily chart here, I am a little concerned about this candle here falling below the blue line here, the eight exponential moving average on the daily chart. It was very hard work to get above it over here. And we maintained that up to the point where we hit the 200 daily moving average. And since then, we made our way down to the lower sides here. I would have expected a support at the 8 EMA. However, but as you can see, the 50 simple moving average is still well below it here at 41,800. So as long as we don't break that, this is still in the realms of being able to come back up above the ATMA to go much higher. But certainly this is a little concerning and that's why we need to keep our eye on this. However, if you look at the long wick here, that tells you something, although this daily candle hasn't closed yet. But if the previous ones are anything to go by, the recent one being this one here and this one over here, you can see that whenever we get a long wick, it's usually the springboard for higher levels. Just like here, we will push back up to higher levels. So I would expect if we close this with the long wick at the bottom here to go and actually test the upper levels here around about the 47.3, 47.4 level. But certainly we need clarity of which direction the market wants to go by breaking this 200 daily moving average. So once we get above that, that's where we're really going to be able to motor up to the 52,000. And if I wasn't already in this trade, at this point here, I would just be very cautious and basically wait until we get above the 200 daily moving average for clarity so that we know that the direction is now more to the upside rather than to the downside. Okay, running down to the four hour chart, a lot more detail here. Okay, so if you've been following me on Twitter, you'll know that I've been posting a number of charts here yesterday. This was the four hour charts that I was showing that there were actually two very interesting candle patterns the first was the Gravestone Doji candle, which is this one here. And as I mentioned there, that we lost the lower range of the 46,275, which was this level here at the bottom of this wick. So we lost that at this point, but we made these three attempts, as I mentioned here, that we made three attempts to reclaim it, this one here, this one, and that one, but we were rejected at that point. So that told us that this level, that this bad boy doji candle had established was a very important level, along with the top side of the level at 47,469. So after three attempts, we made a successful fourth attempt over here. And what I mentioned there was that it is possible to test the upper level because this momentum would normally have taken you to the top of that trend there. However, 
those with a discerning eye will know that there was a certain candlestick pattern developing here called a hikaki pattern. And I've mentioned this a few times in the past. And if you didn't know it, you would be forgiven for thinking that we're going to go to the top, having now reclaimed this level here to the upside. And I had to retweet that as part of my second candlestick pattern, saying quite clearly, while I said here, possible to test the upper range at 47,400, but more probable to test the lower range back because of this candle pattern that was developing and that we were going to test the lower range at 46,275. So that's what I mentioned here, that the reason why the lower range was more probable was because in the green box here was this Hikake pattern. But I said here that we've got an exciting few four hour candles ahead today and tomorrow. And that's exactly what happened. This was the pattern developing here in the four hour chart. We reclaimed this doji candle here at this point, And then we got this Hikake pattern, which was basically saying that there's a high degree of probability that we're going to come back and retest this level here and go even lower. And that's exactly what we've done. And if you're not already following me on Twitter and you want to, then below every one of my videos is my Twitter link here. So just click on the link here and you'll get to my Twitter page. So what happens now that we're in this range here? One of the things I do look for on the four hourly chart is any signs of bearish pressure. And we have got that at the moment simply because we got above the 50 period moving average on the four hour chart here back on the 16th of March here. And we've been able to maintain that all along until we fell out of here and have been just chopping up and down. And currently we have actually fallen below that. And that is usually the first sign of bearish pressure starting to make the price go much lower. However, as I've shown you on the larger time frames, this may be temporary and that the larger time frame still showing bullish pressure to the upside. But as good traders, we need to keep our eye on the lower side because of what's happening here. The reason why I'm not too concerned is because the price actually had an opportunity here to actually break this support line here at 44,200. And it's actually made a higher low here at 44,400. And as you can see with this four hour candle here, we've got a very long wick at the bottom. So we've now provided a spring from which to make higher prices. So only time will tell. I'm not panicking. We've got our trading levels marked up. Certainly if we break this level here at 44,200, then I would be going underweight in my positions, as I've said previously. And my targets to the upside are still, once we get above the 48,000 and above the 200 daily moving average, are still at 52,000. And if we can get past that is at 56 and 58,000. So only time will tell and we'll keep monitoring that. A quick look at the Ethereum chart because there's something very interesting going on. And as we know, many times Ethereum leads the Bitcoin price. And what happened here was that, and just like the Bitcoin price, we came up to test the 200 daily moving average. And just like Bitcoin, we got rejected. However, unlike Bitcoin, we've come back and try to retest it a few more times. And if we have a closer look, you can see quite clearly that we actually closed above the 200 daily moving average once, twice, and then on the third time, we've actually given way here. So that's obviously not a good sign. However, we're still above the support level that Ethereum got at these levels here. So as long as we can keep support here, there is a very good probability that we're going to bounce from here and retest this, and this time may reclaim it to flip to the upside for higher prices. So keep an eye on that. Very, very important, this development here on the 200 daily moving average for the Ethereum price. And the reason why I'm quite bullish with the Ethereum is that if you look left here, very strong support levels at the current levels that we've got. So we've basically broken through this neckline here. We've gone up to that 200 daily moving average and now come back and finding support at exactly the same point. So that would really be a bullish move here before we go to much higher levels. So in conclusion, if we zoom out on the daily chart, we can see that the whole picture is still looking quite bullish because what we've got, if we've got this dominant downtrend, which is now seemed to have bottomed out around these levels here by making these higher lows along the way, and we're currently at another higher low at the moment. So there isn't anything really to be worried about on the larger time frames here. At the same time, we have created a higher high. And so this augurs well that we're really in an upward trajectory on this channel here. Certainly for me, there's no need to panic. The only time I'll really get concerned is at the 44,200 mark 
which is at this candle here that we made on the 1st of April. So the bottom of that wick was about 44,200. If we break that, then that would be a trigger for me to take some action. Okay, so I hope you found value in that. And if you did, then please do remember to like and subscribe and to turn on the notification bell. And if you want to make any comments, questions or suggestions, then leave them in the comments below. Until the next time, take care, stay safe, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.